Heading into the NBA trade deadline, are the Sixers going to go big game hunting or are they going to go after a bench scorer? We're going to talk about that and the latest Sixers trade rumors. Also, was Sixers Nuggets earlier this week an NBA Finals preview as once again, Joel Embiid outplayed Nikola Jokic in a head-to-head. -head. Before we dive into all of that here on 76ers Now, I'm Chase Sr. Thanks for being here. All-Star voting ends on Saturday. Let's get Tyrese Maxey into the All-Star game. Every like that we get on today's video equals one vote for Tyrese Maxey, so hit that thumbs up icon. According to Shams Charania, Philadelphia going to be active going into the deadline, which is coming up in just a couple of weeks, but it's expected that the Sixers are not going to go after a star. Here's the latest from Shams. They could be in the market to bring in a really good bench piece, a really good score. I think they're going to be active. I don't get the sense they're as engaged right now on DeJounte Murray, Zach Levine, or obviously Pascal Siakam. This report coming out before Siakam was traded to the Indiana Pacers on Wednesday. This is a team that has max salary cap space this summer. They already have such a great thing going right now. Could you add one more piece on the edges and see just how far this group can go with Tyrese Maxey, Joel Embiid, Tobias Harris before you make a decision this summer. There's going to be options for them in the summer. They have a bunch of assets. They will have a great ability to go add talent if they want to in the summer. So Shams Charania there noting and mentioning the summertime on multiple occasions. And we've talked about this here on the show a lot. Philadelphia, I think, as we throw out another word out there, wants flexibility. They want flexibility going in to the 2024 offseason and in the summertime because the free agency crop, which we've broken down a couple of times here on 76ers now, and that's why you subscribe if you want informative Sixers talk, is going to be long, it's going to be vast, and there are going to be some pretty solid options. And look, this is the first year of head coach Nick Nurse. Joel Embiid is still in his prime. Tyrese Maxey is entering it, and it looks as though he's going to be a bona fide superstar in this league for the next couple of years, and you can get rid of that $40 million expiring contract for Tobias Harris. And if you do that, you already moved off of the James Harden deal, which was $35, $40 million. That opens up a lot of money where you see where you go this year and see how you can compete as you're the number three seed in the Eastern Conference right now. See how far you can advance. You take that Denver Nuggets approach of, we have two stars. We have Maxi. We have Embiid. Do we build out the rest of the roster instead of clogging it up with another star? And instead, we have a deep team. And that is our identity. And that is our plan to see what the Sixers can do this year because they do have a lot of assets, both in the draft as well as with the money. And you look at the Eastern Conference standings right now, Celtics, number one seed, the Sixers six games back in the win column, so obviously barring a collapse, it's going to be hard to catch Boston, but you can get into that two seed. You're only two games back in the win column from the Milwaukee Bucks. You have a little bit of a cushion on the Cleveland Cavaliers as well as the New York Knicks. So the Sixers right now sitting in a good spot. I do think they need another piece, though, on this Sixers roster because they were exposed a little bit when Joel Embiid was dealing with injury. So with that, you look at some of the trade targets here that the Sixers could go after. These aren't stars by any means. Gordon Hayward, good hooper, injury concerns, certainly a massive concern. Malcolm Brogdon, you want a ball handler who can shoot at all three levels and score and create, but play a little bit off ball like he did with Boston when he was on the floor and sharing it with Jason Tatum, as well as Jalen Brown, but can run that second unit and still give Patrick Beverly minutes so that he can give you high-level defense. He can go that route. You want a shooter who can't play a lick of defense? That's Buddy Heald. Young athlete who's twitchy, Gary Trent Jr., or Alec Burks, who we're familiar with because during that bubble season in the playoffs, he was sadly one of their go-to scorers at that guard spot and can really put the biscuit in the basket. So should the Sixers be going all in at the NBA trade deadline coming up on, I believe, February 9th is the specific date? Why for yes and for no? Share your thoughts with us down in the comments section.
And stay tuned because coming up next was Sixers Nuggets on Monday night. Was it Monday night or Tuesday night? Earlier this week, I should say. Sick Tuesday night. My days all get mixed up because I'm covering the NFL and I've been traveling a lot. Was Sixers Nuggets an NBA Finals preview, analysis, and takeaways from a thriller in Philadelphia? First, let's give a shout out to our sponsor for today's 76ers. Now, it is Factor Meals. Get 50% off when you use the code NBA Chat50, America's number one ready to eat meal delivery service. Everything is chef crafted, dietitian approved, prepared for you. All you have to do is Tick it out of one of those cooler boxes, you stick it in the microwave, and in a couple of minutes, you're going to have a delicious, nutritious, and healthy meal. I mean, look no further than the meals that we're showing you on the screen here, and listen up. What a great deal we have for all Sixers fans out there. 50% off using that code NBAChat50. Skip the grocery stores, skip the meal prepping, skip the meal planning, and just have everything delivered to you which is already prepared with Factor. You pick your pre-made meals, prepped and cooked to perfection, heat them up and enjoy them. Factormeals.com slash NBA chat 50. Here we go. Could we see a Sixers Nuggets finals? I think the ratings for that finals would be awesome because you have Joel Embiid going up against Nikola Jokic. You have Tyrese Maxey, who's been on the Jamal Murray type of path. And Jamal Murray is a spectacular player. And I kind of like how the Sixers match up with Denver because Embiid has a good history going up against Nikola Jokic. And the Sixers able to win 126-121. And some takeaways from that game in primetime, national stage. Obviously, you look no further than Joel Embiid who came back and was on another level. I did have an issue that Embiid and Jokic didn't really guard each other at points of that basketball game, but Embiid, just doing what he's done all year. He's been the best player in basketball. 41 points, 7 rebounds, 10 assists. He said, Everyone, everybody wants to talk about Nikola Jokic being a distributor, and Doc Rivers is kind of taking shots at me saying, I need to get my teammates more involved. Well, there you go. Here's 10 dimes that I'm going to dish out, and I do think that Embiid has become a better passer this year in Nick Nurse's system, but over the last couple of years. Embiid also 13 to 22 from the deck, 3 to 6 from three point range. He was just dominant in every way. And I like the way that he matches up against this Nuggets team. He was guarded by Aaron Gordon. If no double came, easy bucket. And if a double did come, he struggled with this in the past because he starts to press and the game moves a little bit too quickly. He found the open man just like Nikola Jokic does. Takeaway number two, we'll eat the crow here. And we'll admit that we criticized Tobias Harris, but he deserved to be criticized. And here in Philadelphia, we hold our own accountable, whether it's a best friend, whether it's my producer, Jake Chipper, whether it's a Sixers player, Eagles player, Phillies player, Flyers player, family member, girlfriend, wife, husband, significant other, whatever. We hold our own accountable. Why is that? Because we care. And we have a standard in this city. And when Tobias Harris isn't playing all that well, he deserves to be called out. And look, there was a long stretch there where Harris looked awful, he was lacking confidence, and we know the importance of his role when it comes down to the NBA playoffs. He can't crater, otherwise the Sixers team will crater. But 24 points against the Nuggets, honestly, his height, his length, his size, it's a good matchup. Going up against that Nuggets team, 8 of 10 from the floor, 2 of 4 from three-point range. At the start of the fourth, the Sixers were actually down by five, and they had no Embiid on the floor. What did Toby do? Scored eight points in the first 430, tied the game up at 111-111, and then the Sixers ended up winning after that. Shaquille O'Neal, with some lofty praise of Tobias Harris on NBA on TNT, he said they have that piece. His name is Tobias Harris. If he plays like this, I guarantee the Sixers will win the NBA championship. And he was asked, obviously, if Philadelphia is one piece away or not. And that's why we're so critical of Tobias Harris. Because we know if he plays like he's played over, let's say, I don't know, the last two to three weeks when Embiid was out of the lineup, he was cooking, and then Embiid comes back, he plays really well like he did against Denver, then yeah, the Sixers can make a deep run and finally get past the second round for the first time since 2001. 
Tobias doesn't need 25 plus every night. He needs 16 to 20 consistently. And he can't give you 20 one night and then a clunker and six points the next. I've talked about that. Shaq knows ball. He watches the show. Friend of the program. He knows that as well. Number three, Nikola Jokic did dominate the glass. But the Joker always finds a way to dominate in every phase. And that's what makes him a really special player. And to all the detractors out there, he was able to show that during that NBA Finals run. And against Philadelphia, 25 points, 19 rebounds, 11 of them on the offensive glass, only three assists. So I thought the Sixers did a really good job of limiting his distributing opportunities. It's hard to limit him in other phases. Let him crash the glass. But when he creates for others, that's when the Nuggets are really playing their best. The Sixers game plan had him beat on Aaron Gordon and then a combination of guys on Nikola Jokic. And Doc Rivers would never think of something like that. He would just think, and I should call him Glenn, because there's only one Doc in the history of the Sixers. That's Dr. J, Julius Irving. But Doc Rivers would say, up. Oh, Five-man on the five-man and beat on Jokic. But how about the creativity and the defensive game plan from Nick Nurse? Had him beat on Gordon, combination of guys on Jokic to switch up the looks a little bit, getting some athletic players on him, different sizes, different looks. And once Embiid switched on in the fourth, what happened? Offensive rebound stopped. That's Nick Nurse in game adjustments right there. And that's why he's one of the best coaches in the NBA, making adjustments like Eric Spolster does. Kelly Oubre Jr., did not close as part of this closing five. So that was pretty interesting, and I like the malleability. I like the flexibility that Nick Nurse has with this lineup. Glenn Rivers would probably always go with that closing five, regardless. And in the fourth quarter, Nick Nurse switched it up a little bit. Closed with Patrick Beverly over Oubre. Patrick Beverly with a classic quote, by the way. Uh, he was asked about guarding Jamal Murray. He was like, I've been lock locking his ass up for years. Ubre struggled all night, too. So you see a player who's struggling, and then you go with Pat Bev, Batum, able to guard Jamal Murray. That's an interesting defensive matchup on Murray because of Batum's length and size. And in turn, Murray 0-4 in the fourth quarter, and sometimes he cooks in that fourth. What this tells me, Sixers might not trust Ubre's defensive ability entirely at times that Athletic twitchy wing has come in handy for Philadelphia. They should be looking for an efficient two-way wing at the deadline. I think it really helps this team. And then lastly, I was just thinking about this, and I wanted to hold off for just a moment. The Sixers cannot trade Nicholas Batum. He's really critical to what this team wants to do and what they do on both ends of the floor. A defensive player who can lock up Jamal Murray and then offensively spread the floor, but he's a smart, savvy player who has that international type of background and fundamental skill set to his game. And then you can't really replace his size either. Eight points, four rebounds, two assists, very efficient, three of four, two of three from three. His impact really has become undeniable. And he's also an underrated passer, good decision maker, quick trigger from three. I mean, he's a catch and shoot guy. And with that size, high release point, difficult to defend, playoff chops, instincts, on defense, vital part of this team. If you made it to the end of today's video and you didn't flake out on us just to get the trade details, give me a real one down below. Thanks for watching the show. Don't forget to subscribe because we're going to continue to cook up content like this.